In the past, we've gone over some of the most unique and helpful tools that Affinity Designer has to offer. But in today's lesson, we'll be having a look at some of the more obscure features that may not always be visible in plain sight. As useful as some of these tools may be, they can't help you if you don't know where they are. So in this video, we'll be going over eight hidden features in Affinity Designer that you may not have known about. The first hidden feature we'll be looking at is Isolation Mode, which allows you to temporarily deactivate all of the layers on your canvas except for the one you currently have selected. As you may already know, each layer in Affinity Designer has an icon next to it that allows you to toggle its visibility off and on. But let's say you wanted to deactivate every layer except for one. This could be a tedious process if you're working on a document that has a lot of layers. This is where Isolation Mode comes in handy. To activate it, simply hold the Alt key and click on the layer. If you're a Mac user, then you would use the Option key instead. Once you do that, you'll notice that the layer you clicked on will now be the only visible layer on your screen, allowing you to edit the object as needed without the other objects getting in the way. To exit isolation mode, simply click on another layer and everything will be returned back to its previous state. This is a feature that you will not see documented anywhere in the software, whether it be the menu system or the user interface, so be sure to memorize the keyboard shortcut. If you've ever used any kind of design software before, then you're probably already familiar with how color pickers and dropper tools work. They allow you to choose a color based on a sample selection of another object on your canvas, whether it be a vector path or an image. Affinity Designer, though, has a color picker that works not just for the objects on your canvas, but for every pixel on your screen, including the user interface and other windows you may have open. To access this color picker, navigate to the color menu and click and drag the dropper icon anywhere on your screen to sample a color. You'll notice that it grabs colors from virtually anywhere, even the menu interface. In fact, you could even minimize the window and sample a color from an image in another window. This is really useful because it allows you to sample colors from images without having to import them into the software. Another handy feature at your disposal in Affinity Designer is the ability to copy color codes to your clipboard. This can be really useful if you're doing something like designing a website and you want to make sure that your colors are all consistent. In other applications, you'll have to highlight the text and then right-click it to copy it. In Designer, though, all you have to do is click on the menu icon in the color menu and select the option that reads Copy Color to Clipboard as Hex. Once selected, you can simply paste your color codes anywhere you need them. One of the more obscure features in Affinity Designer is an option that allows you to add noise or a grain-like texture to whatever color you currently have selected. This is hidden behind the Opacity slider. Simply click on the tiny circle just beneath the label and you'll see that it changes to a noise slider. You can add noise to the color by sliding it to the right and decrease it by sliding it to the left. And if you need to return back to the opacity slider at any point, just click the icon again. Another helpful feature that isn't visible in plain sight would be the Symbols menu, which can be accessed by navigating to Window and selecting Symbols. The Symbols menu allows you to edit multiple copies of an object by making transformations to just one of them. To use it, select an object and click on the Create button in the Symbols menu. You should see the object added to the menu as a symbol. You can now click and drag the object onto your canvas to create copies of them, and any edits that you make to the original object will also be applied to the other copies. This can be really helpful when designing things like patterns and various types of layouts. If you're a Dropbox user, then Affinity Designer makes it easy to access all of your files. To link your installation of Designer with your Dropbox account, simply access the Preferences menu by navigating to Affinity Designer and selecting Preferences. If you're a Windows user, then this will be located under the Edit menu. In the Preferences menu, navigate down to where it says Linked Services. You should see a Dropbox logo along with a button that allows you to link your account. Simply click on that button and follow the instructions to complete the link. Once connected, you'll be able to send and receive files with ease. Did you know that you can save files in Affinity Designer with all of the fonts and linked images embedded in the document? 
All you have to do is go to File and select Save as Package instead of the usual Save As. When using this option, every single font used in your design will be embedded in the document so that you can open it on another device and continue working on it without having to install the font. This is especially useful when using the iPad app because installing fonts on an iPad can be a real pain sometimes. The final hidden feature that we'll be going over in this lesson is the ability to select objects on your canvas by color. This can save you a lot of time when working on complex designs because it prevents you from having to click on multiple objects one by one. To use this feature, simply click on an object to select it, then navigate to Select, Select Same, and choose Color. Once enabled, every object on your canvas that contains that color will be selected. Not only can you select objects by color, but you can also select them by other parameters as well, such as stroke color, stroke weight, type of shape, and more. The list of hidden features in Affinity Designer does not end here. This software is packed with lots of helpful goodies and Easter eggs that you may not have known about. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Did you know about any of these features already? More importantly, are there any other hidden features that you know of that could have been included in the video? Feedback is always welcome. That should do it for today's video, and as always, thanks for watching. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.